You're meant to be excited about the things you're doing in your life. And you're meant to change and evolve. And you're meant to welcome this next version of you. And you're welcome to be becoming. And it's okay to sit for a minute. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing, numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. This episode feels slightly vulnerable, and I'm actually really excited to kind of vocally process a little bit of what's been going on behind the scenes, because the more that I've shared about this, the more that people are saying, oh my gosh, me too. I feel this too. And the topic of today's show is kind of like, what do you do when you're not totally sure what's next? When you're maybe in a sort of identity crisis or in this transition in your life where you're shifting identities or your passions are changing or you're looking at something that you've built and you're like, I don't know if I want to be doing this a year from now or five years from now or 10 years from now. If you've read my book, How Are You Really? You know that I've had about 8 bajillion different careers in my decade of entrepreneurship from being a wedding photographer to running a wedding blog to having a watercolor print shop to teaching courses, all these different things. I am no stranger to pivoting. But in order to pivot, you kind of have to know where you're heading. And the more that I talk to people about this feeling I've been having, the more that I realize, one, I'm not alone, but two, there is this transition period that a lot of us sit in and it is so uncomfortable, but we also don't really have the tools to know how to navigate it well. So today I want to share about what I've been feeling and how I've been working through it and what I've been learning about myself in the process And I hope that today's episode is this invitation for you to ponder where you're heading. And if there are certain things you need to leave behind to continue on on your own journey. So let's dive on in. We're going to talk about what to do when you're not sure what's next. Here we go. Do I have a new podcast recommendation for you? If you like the Gold Digger podcast, you'll love tuning into Content is Profit, hosted by Luis and Fonzie Camejo, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network. Discover the secrets and strategies on how your business can achieve the frictionless sale. Luis and Fonzie dig into frameworks, strategies, tactics, and feature special guests to bring you all the information you need in order to turn your content into profit. They tackle topics like five things that you should do to grow your podcast and how to leverage trends to generate attention and answer questions like, what does it mean to stand out in the marketplace? How can you rise above the noise and help others with your offers? If you need a new show to add to your lineup, listen to Content is Profit wherever you get your podcasts. Do you love the Enneagram? If that's a big yes, you need to watch Beth McCord's three-part series called How to Lead, Coach, and Counsel with the Enneagram. In this free video series, you'll learn how to make flexible income as an Enneagram expert in less than a month. Sign up for the course today at yourenneagramcoach.com slash Jenna. When I take a minute to look at this last year of life, there's been a lot of things happening. I had my second baby, my daughter, Quinn. We are building a house. We sold a house. I wrote a book. I launched a book. There's been a lot of things that have happened. And I've really entered this interesting season of my life. You know, what's been really interesting is that my entire book process, the writing, the launching, the marketing, the reading, the reviews, like every part of writing and getting How Are You Really Out Into the World was honestly my favorite thing I have ever done. And I've said this a million times, but I never expected to write a book. I never thought I would. 
It wasn't on my vision board. It wasn't in my plans. And so the fact that I feel like I came fully alive for that entire process kind of made me pause a little bit. Like, do I really know what I love? I said I would never do this. And now it is my favorite thing that I've ever done. Like my passion for everything that went into my book runs so deep. And it's kind of funny because when I was in the launch process of my book, I had a few people reach out to me and they were like, okay, just a heads up that when all of this craziness dies down, a lot of times people kind of feel blank or empty, or even like disappointed. There's so much work and buildup that goes into something like a book that when it's done, you're kind of left thinking, okay, now what? And I remember being like, oh, no, 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 I'm good. Like I acknowledge that this book is not my life's work. It's just a really important piece of work in my life. I'm actually not worried about that. Like I feel so on fire and creative, but there is something to be said about all of this buildup to something And then it's done. It's kind of like a wedding day, right? Like you plan this wedding for like sometimes up to a year, even two years, and then it's done in a day and you're like, okay, so now what? And it's been a really interesting thing for me because like, I just want my book to be in every person's hands. Like if you are listening to this and you haven't gotten, how are you really yet? I so encourage it. I just, I love it so much and my devotion to it runs so deep. And what I think was so interesting about the whole process for me is that the whole book process was something totally new and different than what I've been doing the last four years. When I really take a good hard look at the last four, even five years of my life, it's kind of been a rinse and repeat process. And honestly, that was needed for the season of life I found me in as a first time mom, as someone who struggled with pregnancy loss, being pregnant. Like, I feel like when I moved to Minnesota and found out I was pregnant with Coco the next day, my whole life shifted in a way where I needed to just rely on doing what was working and leveraging the things I already knew. And I think that for 2020 and what happened in that year and and everything that came from the pandemic among all the lessons we learned, I feel like I was ready to like step outside of that box. And it's been really interesting for me too, because, you know, when I had Coco, I really hit the brakes hard. I stopped speaking on stages. I stayed at home. I cut back on launches. Like there was a lot of things that I did to really just protect my time and protect the transition of becoming a mom. And so there's this slight guilt accompanied with all of these recent changes because I'm like, wait, is Quinn having a totally different experience? Because, you know, she's seven months old and we're in New York City and I'm on the Today Show launching a book. And, you know, I'm taking her on these trips where I'm speaking on stages and like, it's a totally different first year of life. And I always remind myself that they literally don't remember any of this. But there is this part of me that's like, am I doing Quinn a disservice? Or, you know, should I have been doing this when I had Coco? And I can't, I can't look back on that. I can only look forward. And so what's been so interesting for me is that I felt on the cusp of like, okay, what next? And I say that with so much awe over the fact that I get to choose right? Like I do not discount the privilege in being able to sit for a minute and say, what do I want to do? What do I want to try? That is a huge privilege. And I've also worked really hard for it, but it is rooted in privilege to be able to say, okay, so now what? And it's interesting because I was even sending voice memos to some of my longest standing team members a year, two years ago saying, I feel like there's a pivot coming on. I feel like there's a change coming. And what has been so beautiful about this kind of in-between season is that I've kept my team in the loop. As a leader, I've kind of said, you know, I'm sensing something different. I don't really know what it is. I don't know how to vocalize it, but I just want you to know, and I want you to be an invited in this. And I want you to brainstorm and I want you to be honest about what feels good to you and what you want to try. And it's been really cool because as a company, I feel like we're all just like in this beautiful marinating season of like, okay, so where do we want to go? What do we want to do? 
I recently took August off and there was a few reasons why I did that. One, I knew that with the book coming out that I was going to be going hard for a while and I needed to draw a line in the sand that said, all right, now rest. Like I knew that there was going to be this momentum and this feeling of like, I can't hit the brakes now, but if I can't hit them now, I'm going to feel that way forever. And so I took the month of August off and I had this vision of what that would look like in my vision did not exactly unfold the way I thought it would. My vision was like me sitting down and writing every morning and, you know, just starting to get stories on pages and doing some of the creative things I've been craving. And while my August didn't exactly look like that, it looked a lot more like going to the beach with my family and going to the zoo and like all these incredible family adventures. I swear every morning when Coco would wake up, she'd say, are we going on a family date today? And August was beautiful for so many reasons. However, it wasn't filled with what I had envisioned. It was really interesting because I feel like I learned a lot during the month. I always feel that way. Whenever I take a break or like step back enough to get out of the day to day, I feel like my eyes are open and I'm kind of reminded of like, okay, you know, this is what you're craving or this is what you miss or this is what is stressing you out. And so I learned a ton in August, even though it wasn't what I thought it would be. And so what I have been noticing in me, and I'm just going to kind of word vomit some of these things, and then hopefully try to tie them up in a pretty bow for you. Because here's the thing, when you're in the in-between, it's really hard to wrap anything up in a pretty bow because you're literally just kind of in this like waiting game. And August really revealed a few things that I've been craving. And I just want to share them because they are totally different than the Jenna of a few years ago, even the Jenna of a year ago. So I have been craving like more schedules, more structure. Like I have gotten to the point where I want to print out a monthly calendar and literally write in things like yoga classes and things like that, like structure so that our whole family as a unit knows exactly what's happening. It's been interesting as we've transitioned into back to school because Drew and I are like back to like finding our footing again. Coco goes to school from eight to noon. So with drive time and stuff, it's honestly a really short window, but it's still a window of time. And so generally speaking, Drew will take the girls to do school drop off. He comes home. I feed Quinn, put her down for a nap. A lot of times I'll watch the monitor he can go to the gym or run errands and then he comes to pick her up and they go do pickup. So it, it happens really quickly and there's still a lot of motherhood tied into that. But I have been craving like this consistency where I can wake up on a Monday and know, okay, on Mondays we do this. On Tuesdays we do that. Now, I used to be a person who hated having a schedule like that. Like that used to feel so trapping to me. And in this season of busyness and trying to juggle all the things like I'm craving that. I am also craving and I noticed something about myself is I often don't really give myself any time to like acclimate before getting into work or before shutting down work and getting back into motherhood. I recognize this actually when I broke one of my laptops because I slammed down the screen and my cord was stuck in it and it cracked my laptop screen. But I was doing that as I was running out the door to get back to mom life. And I realized like, whoa, like I don't even take like a minute to just sit with myself between juggling those two big parts of my life, work and motherhood. It's like I have gotten into this habit where it's like the second I'm done momming, I get into work. The second I'm done working, I get into momming. And like, I need a minute. And so I recognize this tendency and it's helped for me to really honor this deeper desire for a minute, like a beat. Something that was really revealed to me in August is that I have this really deep craving for alone time. And here's what I mean by this. Drew would argue that I'm alone for a couple hours a day, right? And I get that. <laughs> I'm like, I have so much empathy for stay-at-home parents who are on the clock all the time, who are a lot of times underappreciated. And he would probably look at me and be like, when you're working, you're alone. 
But to me, I have been craving alone time, like where I am invited to go inward. If you've read my book, you know that like, I am not afraid of asking myself the hard questions. And I feel like I've been doing that a lot lately, but I need some time alone. And I'm introverted and introverts recharge alone. And I realize, like in the rhythm of my day, you know, from the minute I wake up, I'm momming. From the minute I get a break from momming, I'm working. I go back into momming. Then it's mine and Drew's time together. And then we crash. I mean, we went up to bed at like 8.30 last night. So <laughs> the windows of time are very small. And if I'm not super intentional, I leave no margin for myself to be alone. Like, tell me if I am the only one who like, if you run an errand and you get back and you're sitting in a quiet car in the garage and you just wait a few minutes, like you, you just like savor that quietness. Or if you escape to the bathroom and no one knows where you are and you just sit for one extra minute, I've been craving that in my life. And it's really interesting because I have been doing a lot of those kind of like human design type things, like looking into like who I am as a human, like really trying to kind of uncover like different traits within myself. And I was reading this report about myself and I found something that was like so unique and so interesting to me. And it basically said like, you need to process alone. And sometimes that need for being alone can be intimidating to the people that you live with. And so it is your job to communicate that your desire to be alone is not a reflection of the people in your life. It is not a reflection of like, I just need a break. It is a reflection of like, I need to connect with myself on a deeper level. And in order to do that, I need some alone time. And it was such a beautiful reminder to me to like openly communicate those needs. It actually flashed me back to being in labor. When I was in labor, Drew and my mom, who's a doula, who got doula certified to be with us during the delivery of both my girls, were in the room. And, you know, sometimes when you're in labor, you need like the counter pressure, you need people touching you, you need people doing all these different things for you. And for me, when I was in labor, I needed to go inward. Like I would just close my eyes and go into a whole different world. And that is like this innate thing about me. And so anyways, reading this review about myself and this deep need to go inward, it was such a good reminder for me to be really proactive in the communication of like, I need this alone time. And it is not a reflection of me not feeling fulfilled in my different roles. It is not a reflection of me not wanting to be with you or spend quality time with you. It is merely a deep need within myself in order for me to check in, to come fully alive, to know what's next, like all of these things. So I love that. It's October. And you know what that means? It means sweaters and pumpkin spice lattes. And it also probably means that you're in the final stretch of your fiscal year. And in this interesting economic climate, you're also probably thinking about how to best optimize things like budgets, strategies, and operations in 2023. But let's be honest. No one wants the best probable solution to deal with whatever comes next. You want the best solution, period. Whatever stage your business is in, HubSpot CRM platform is ready to scale with you at the flip of a metaphorical switch. With totally customizable hubs, HubSpot has thousands of apps that you can easily integrate, use, or get rid of whenever you need them or don't. Plus, transparent costs and an intuitive interface means there are no fancy frills to hide behind. That's because HubSpot isn't here to probably grow your business. It's here to help you grow your business, period. Learn how HubSpot can help your business grow better at HubSpot.com. Where are my fellow threes at? If you immediately raise your hand because you know exactly what it means when someone says they're a type three or seven or type insert any number one through nine here, then you probably love the Enneagram. If that's true, then you need to watch Beth McCord's three-part series called How to Lead, Coach, and Counsel with the Enneagram. Beth has been studying the Enneagram for two decades, and she loves training people with this powerful tool. In this free video series, you'll learn how to make flexible income as an Enneagram expert in less than a month. The course is designed for three types of people, those who already run a coaching business or a mental health practice, 
those who are interested in learning how to start a coaching business as a side hustle or a full-time career, and those who are Enneagram enthusiasts who want to take their knowledge to the next level. Sign up for the course today at yourenneagramcoach.com slash Jenna. There is nothing better than making a living from work you love. Get this free mini course today and create your dream career. Again, that's yourenneagramcoach.com slash Jenna. Another thing that happened in August that was so enlightening, while August didn't totally pan out how it was, there are certain things that unfolded that were absolutely meant to happen. I was listening to this podcast. It's the Drew Proit podcast. And he had this episode with Alex Benayan. And it was about this 30-day journaling challenge. And I was listening to the episode. It was really interesting. They were talking about like their cultural upbringings and just these different things. And Alex Benayan was talking about how he studied all of these different CEOs and how he was so inspired by all these different CEO stories. But he often found that a lot of CEOs hit these places once they've reached a certain level of success or they've achieved something where they find themselves asking like, what's next? Or their passion shift. And they're kind of in that in between. And and I was like, oh my gosh, I can relate. I can relate. And he talked about this 30-day journaling practice that he's led a ton of CEOs through and a ton of humans through. And essentially what you do is for 30 days, you answer three questions. This could take you anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes a day. It's not a long time. And I am someone who like, I can literally look at my desk right now. And there are a few different beautiful journals on my desk, but they have never compelled me to write until I heard this challenge. And I've always like loved journaling. Like when I was in college, I would go sit at Starbucks and journal every day and do devotionals. I just as an adult have not prioritized the time to journal. And so when I listened to this, and it piqued my interest, because the why was so connected with where I was finding myself, I was like, all right, 30 days. I'm in. Let's do it. So Alex Benayan created this challenge. And the three questions that you answer daily are this. What excited me today? Like, what did I look forward to? What was I anticipating? What what made me come alive? Like, really think about your day and like, what did you love? Like, what was awesome about it? So that's question number one. Question number two, what did I dread today? Like, what did I not want to do? What was leaving me feeling depleted. So number one, what energizes or excited me? Number two, what did I dread or what depleted me? And then number three, what did I learn about myself today? And the first few days I was doing this, I was still in my August break. And so it was very, very motherhood heavy. But I started to learn some of the things I've been sharing with you. Like I was so excited when I got a little bit of a break to read a book or to listen to a podcast. I was drained when I felt like I didn't get any time to myself. I learned a lot about myself. And what's been so incredible is I keep my journal out. So some days I have it on my desk. Some days it's on my nightstand. Last night before I went to bed, I pulled it out, filled out one page, answered these three questions. And What Alex says is after 30 days, you spend an hour just reading all of them, read through all 30 of them. And then you do what he calls a graduation ceremony where you then say, what excited me this month? What depleted me this month? What did I learn about myself this month? And it's funny because there are some days that sound exactly like the day before. And then there are some days where I'm like, oh my gosh. I just had a breakthrough. Like I literally got an idea for my next course that I want to create. I started to notice different trends in what I was saying. And I also started to recognize these different needs and how they were showing up in my life. So I have loved this and I'm going to keep it going way beyond 30 days because it's been really helpful for me. And here's the other thing. I think a lot of us crave being more present in our lives. Like we finish our day. And maybe when our head hits the pillow, or maybe we wake up at two in the morning and we find ourselves like asking, like, what did I even get accomplished today? Or like, did the work I do even mattered? Or did anyone even notice what I was doing today? When we ask ourselves these questions, when it feels like we're missing the point of our lives, 
a practice like journaling allows you to be more present. And when you know that you're going to be reporting on your day, I feel like you move through your day differently, right? Like, it's kind of like when you do a food journal and you're like, oh, crap, I've got to write down these Doritos. So I'm not going to eat them because I don't want to write them down. Same thing goes for this journaling practice in that you have to be really honest. And in that honesty and in knowing that there's this degree of accountability that you will be revisiting, I feel like it invites you to be more present for your life. Like I, I love it because beyond just seeing the themes and kind of pulling out these themes and, and finding direction through them. I also just feel like it kind of wakes me up to life of like, I'm going to be reporting on these things. And so I want to be super honest about it. Now, one thing that's been really game changing for me and something that I want to share that has also come out of this practice and out of this kind of season of like, all right, what's next is really prioritizing how I ground myself in my day. And I know this sounds kind of woo woo. And I've also been in seasons of my life where I'm like, dang, I wish I had 20 minutes to do that. Or I wish I had 30 minutes to do that in my morning. In fact, I was someone who for a very long time scoffed at things like morning routines. However, like I said, I'm changing, I'm evolving, I'm craving different things. And so one thing that has been so helpful for me in really understanding this deep desire for alone time is the minute that Drew gets out the door to bring the girls to school, it's right around 8am is the minute that I give myself 30 minutes to settle in. It kind of looks different on a day to day basis. For example, today, I laid on my PEMF mat, I'm going to be doing a whole biohacking episode coming up. But I laid on this bio mat, I had a red light on me and my body. And I meditated. And that was how I started my day. And it didn't take a full 30 minutes, probably took 15 minutes, maybe 20. And I used to the second he would leave, I used to crack open my laptop and get straight to work. And what I've noticed is, is that I am so much more grounded in my day when I take those 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes to myself, like, He came home this morning and I was making a smoothie and I was grounded and I could say exactly what I needed to get done for the day. And it was just this really powerful expression of like, I poured into myself first, my cup is more full. Now I'm able to pour into my work, I'm able to pour into my family and I don't resent the busyness, if that makes sense. So If there is a way for you, if you are someone like me, where you feel like you don't know what's next, or you're on the cusp of a pivot, or maybe you're feeling resentful for all the things you have on your plate, if there is a window of time, whether it's when you're driving to the office, sitting in a parking lot, doing drop off, whether it is just a small window of time when your little one is sleeping, or your spouse or partner or roommates are out of the house. How can you, instead of trying to be so productive with the things you need to do, how can you focus that energy and that space on filling yourself up? And I know, again, it sounds wooey, right? But I am all about where the woo meets the work. And let me tell you, when I do the woo, I meet the work in a whole different way. Now, one thing that I want to share about is it's interesting being in this season of transition. And in the past, I was 1000% someone who would rush something like this because it's uncomfortable, right? Like I am someone who is planning a year in advance. I am someone who loves like a good quarterly deep dive. Here's what's happening. And right now, as you are listening to this, like, I don't know what next year is going to hold. It's kind of all blank space right now. And I also kind of love that. I have devoted this final quarter of the year to really giving myself and my team the time and the space to get quiet with ourselves, to like explore, to ask questions. And you know, what's been so interesting for me, and I'm slightly hesitant to even talk about this, but whatever, is that in my journaling practice, a lot of the themes that have been coming up, the things that have been exciting me, are some of the things that like I started with, like health has been really exciting me. Like when I think about 
you know, that question of like, if you were to have a day with nothing on your calendar, nothing to do, what would you do? Like, I nerd out over health podcasts lately. I've been like prioritizing my health in different ways. Like there are new routines and habits that like I am obsessed with. I feel so much better as a person when I do these things and these rituals. I've also been loving like more of the lifestyle stuff. Like we're building a home and like on Saturdays, I crack open my laptop and I'm like looking at couches and furniture and feng shui and like all of these things like that excites me. That lights me up. And I love affiliate stuff. Like I love affiliate marketing. I love connecting people with brands and things and products and courses that I love. Like that lights me on fire. And so it's been so cool to kind of look at the themes that have come out of this journaling practice and also recognize like some of the things that I said I wasn't going to do, like speaking on stages suddenly feel exhilarating. I'm changing, I'm evolving. And you know, so much of my book talks about this process of like welcoming the evolution of who you are and who you're becoming. And it's like, there's this part of me that's like, I said, I wasn't going to speak on stages so that I could be home to tuck my kids into bed every night. And that was my definition of success. And here I am being like, that was my definition of success in that season. And my definition of success in this season is bringing the family with me when I'm speaking on stages or taking an extra day to myself when I'm on the road to claiming that alone time in a concentrated effort so that I come back feeling revived and alive. And so it's been so cool because this evolution has opened me up for what's next, but without allowing myself to really sit in the discomfort, to ask those questions, to journal, to get quiet, to prioritize self-care in a season where I don't know what's next, I wouldn't be able to pivot in a way that felt aligned and authentic. And let me tell you, when I launched my book, I have never truly in a decade of entrepreneurship, never felt more exhilarated than I did during that process. Like I would sit down and be like, I have eight interviews today and I am so pumped. And an old version of myself would have died. I would have been exhausted before the day had even begun. And I think it unlocked this reminder of like, you're meant to be excited about the things you're doing in your life. And you're meant to change and evolve. And you're meant to welcome this next version of you. And you're welcome to be becoming. And it's okay to sit for a minute. It's okay to bench yourself while you are waiting. It is okay to explore and try to uncover what is next for you while also saying, I don't know yet. And so this episode is for anyone who is finding themselves in an identity crisis. I mean, I'm over here. I got Invisalign at the age of 34. I am uncovering this next version of myself. I'm healthier than I have ever been. I am loving things I swore I would never do. And I am here to say, I don't know exactly what's next, but I am committed to getting quiet with myself so that whatever it is, it makes me come fully alive. Because we deserve nothing less than loving the lives that we're living. So I hope today's episode meets you wherever you are. I hope that if you are in the season of transition, that you take on some practices, whether it is claiming 10 minutes to yourself or adopting the journaling practice that I am. I also hope it gives you permission to say, I sense something is coming and I don't know what it is. And I will sit patiently in waiting while I uncover it and discover who I'm becoming. And I will enjoy the waiting season. Because if I have learned anything in my life, sometimes the season of waiting is just as important as what it is that we're waiting for. Thank you so much, Gold Diggers, for listening to this episode. And real quick favor for you, something that I have been contemplating and discovering in this season of waiting is doing more episodes like this unscripted from the heart, me to you recorded in real time 
And so if you enjoyed today's show, one, would you screenshot it and share it with somebody that you love, someone that you think it would help? But two, would you just slide into my DMs and let me know if you like this approach? You know, I've done things with a lot more structure in the past and I've just been craving more of this just hitting record and stepping up to the mic and talking about in real time what I'm going through. And so I'd love to know if this approach resonates with you, if it reaches you, literally just give me the feedback. I love it. Anyways, until next time, gold diggers, thank you so much for being a part of the show and keep on digging your biggest goals. And if you don't know what that goal is, sit in the waiting and enjoy it. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 